Hello all, welcome to another video of Horizons Across and today we are going to discuss an interesting topic once again. So before starting, let's ask a few questions to ourselves. Does 1 kg of sugar talk about its amount? Um, no, it's its uh, mass. Yeah, and does 1 liter of water talk about its amount? No, once again, it's its volume, not amount. So, this problem indicates that we don't have any standard volume for one amount of some amount. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, if you want to say one amount of oxygen gas, what do you mean? How much? And for this, we have moles. Oops, not these cute little animals, but moles. But how much amount is one amount? I mean, how much is one mole? One mole of something means some specific number of that something. For instance, a mole of salt, NaCl, means 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 molecules of NaCl. This number, 6.023 into 10 raised to 23, is called the Avogadro number or abbreviated as I mean short form as Na and this stats implies that the number of moles is equal to number of particles upon the Avogadro number. If you realize it means that one mole of something has 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 particles. <laughs> Don't ask me if someone really calculated or counted those. So here's one more note for the formula. The number of moles denoted as n is equal to the mass of the sample upon divided by the molecular weight of that sample. Molecular weight here refers to the gram atomic mass GAN or the gram molecular mass GMM of the sample. Whoa. This is a very big list. Yeah, a few elements, few important elements. You, not, you need not learn these, but if you have the curiosity, you will learn them on your own. So let's see a few real life examples. Suppose you had 23 grams of sodium. How many moles would that be? If you, uh, if you saw the molecular weight of sodium was 23, so the number of moles is equal to the number of, I mean, the number of moles is equal to the mass of the sample upon the molecular weight. So the mass here is 23 and the molecular weight is also 23. So the number of moles is 1. What about salt? 117 grams, for instance, of salt means how many moles? When you have a compound having more than one element, you just have to calculate the individual gram atomic mass multiplied the number of atoms of that element in the molecule. So here we have one atom of sodium in this salt. So one sodium has the gram atomic mass as 23 and chlorine has 35.5. So 23 plus 35.5 makes it 50 makes it 58.5. So the number of moles in 117 grams of salt would be 2 moles. Now you know how many moles are there in 1 kg of packet of salt, right? Moving on, let's solve a quick question. If x is the number of electrons, y is the number of protons and z is the number of neutrons present in 98 grams of sulfuric acid, then what is x plus y minus z? Think over it, pause the video. So, 98 grams of sulfuric acid means nothing but 1 mole. How? We just calculate the molecular weight of H2SO4 by adding the individual gram atomic mass of the elements and you will get that as 98. 98 upon 98 is 1. So, you have 1 mole of sulfuric acid. As stated earlier, 1 mole of something has the Avogadro number molecules. So here we have Na molecules of sulfuric acid. Let's see for one molecule 
the number of electrons, protons and neutrons in sulfuric acid. So there are 50 electrons, 50 protons and 48 neutrons in one molecule of sulfuric acid. One molecule for one molecule x plus y minus z is 52. So for Na molecules we, we would have 52 Na and that's it. That's the answer. Now this is the question that might ring. Where does calculating the moles help? I mean why is it even important? What is its use? The mole concept is widely widely used in stoichiometry. It tells how many moles of product would be produced in a chemical reaction and that is very important in the industrial sector. Let us see how it is used. Let's see this chemical reaction involving calcium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. So here you see the coefficients of the reactants and the products talk about the amount of each reactant required to produce a particular amount of products. It means that when one mole of calcium hydroxide, one because one is the coefficient of calcium hydroxide. So when one mole of calcium hydroxide reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid, two because 2 is the coefficient of HCl and this reaction would give 1 mole CaCl2 plus 2 moles of water which means when converting to grams we have 74 grams of calcium hydroxide reacting with 73 grams of hydrochloric acid gives triple 1 grams of CaCl2 and 36 grams of water. You see, the law of conservation of mass is also maintained here. 74 plus 73 is 147, which is equal to 111 plus 36. Let's see one more reaction. What would happen when you would, when you would react nitrogen gas with hydrogen gas? This would be the reaction. One mole of nitrogen gas would react with three moles of hydrogen gas to form two moles of ammonia. But what if you had only I mean you had 3 moles of nitrogen gas and only 3 moles of hydrogen gas. How many more moles of ammonia would be produced? If you had 3 moles of nitrogen gas to completely utilize them for a complete reaction, you would want 9 moles of hydrogen gas. But here you have only 3 moles. So the 3 moles of hydrogen gas would control the equation, control the reaction by reacting with only one mole of nitrogen gas leaving two moles of nitrogen gas unreacted so here three moles of hydrogen gas i mean the hydrogen gas is controlling the reaction it is limiting the reaction and hence it's called the limiting reactant or even sometimes referred to as the limiting reagent Let's come to the last question of the day. 3Cu plus 8HNO3 gives out 3Cu NO3 twice plus 2NO plus 4H2. 127 grams Cu gives 20 grams NO on reacting with X grams HNO3. Find X and also find the number of electrons in X grams of HNO3. Tricky or out of the box it might seem but it's really very fundamental and easy. I really believe you would get that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.